Daniel, welcome back once again. I'm um, glad that we're finally in the double digits now for the Any Patterns series, and I'm really excited to see what uh, today's topic point will be for the next episode on uh, some uh, DAX issues and problems to kind of avoid or, or work around. Yeah, thanks for the intro, Reed. Mm -hmm. uh, good to see you again. Uh, let's have a look uh, what I have Absolutely. today. So this is uh, a basic example I'd like to cover today. And uh, I've made this formula silly on purpose, just so that it serves as a placeholder for you know code that could be more complex. Because I see it fairly often things like this. Like if something is zero, then it should be blank. Otherwise, it should be that something. And in some cases, actually, people uh, mean well and they uh, format their code. And um, in some cases, it uh, it makes it a bit difficult to, to check whether this code is the same as, say, this code. Like, if it's on the same level, if it's formatted at the same level, then at least you can select this and then press Control Shift L, and then you can see that they're both identical because the selection worked. Because Control Shift L selects everything that is exactly the same, like to the space, the same. I mean, so in this I case, think. I was going to say, like, I, I like that feature because I know, like, in Notepad plus plus and you know other coding tools, as you highlight, it automatically shows you other bodies that 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 share the same highlighted text. But it's uh, this is a nice way to do it built into uh, um, the Power BI desktop. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, the actual formula here that is inside if doesn't matter that much. What matters is we're trying to hide the zero. So if it's zero, then we want to blank out the result so that it doesn't show up in, say, column charts or tables mm -hmm. or whatever. That's the main principle. What's the usual way to address this, Reed? I say the question one more time. So usually, how would you improve this formula? Because surely there must be a better way than repeating your own code, right? Well, vari variables, of course, for, uh, number one is like the, you, you could declare that as a variable uh, to cache it and then just uh, compare it twice, especially anytime you're caught, you're duplicating code. Uh, that, that's something that can be referenced multiple times as long as you're not applying any additional filter functions to it. Yes, you're absolutely right. And a very good note about filter functions <laughs> and um, variables, by the way, because I think not everybody knows about it. Maybe we should uh, talk about it uh, some other time. Because when I first encountered that behavior, it took me like a couple of hours to see like what was going on. And then mm -hmm. I even logged a ticket with Microsoft saying that it was a bug. <laughs> I still, every once in a while, like, I think I, under I completely understand variables and then, oh, it's not performing correctly. Okay, well, I guess I can't use this as a variable. Then I then I, I figure out why, and then I go back to it. But it, it is it's a very nuanced thing to to use them. I, I would say that there's a lot of exceptions to when and when not. So uh, for people tuning in, like yeah, if you're if you're still on the boat where you like you think you're learning them a bit, like I'd say I I understand like ninety eight percent of of like appropriate ways to use them. But every once in a while, I still trip myself up. So it, it it's definitely not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> You suggested we replace it with uh, variables, and we do something like this. If mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, zero, then uh, blank. Otherwise, we replace it like this, and return result. So yes, uh, this is uh, perfectly valid. This is good. Now, if you are like me, and you're like fewer lines of code, then you, you can still do... shorten it. I was going to say, does not equal zero, then some formula, then close it yeah. out. Yep, exactly. You don't, because you yeah. you have to have a true condition. You don't have to have a false condition. Yes. And you actually don't even need this. Because whatever is not zero is true. Even mm, if it's like five. Yeah, or yeah that's true. I, it, 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 well, Interesting. So, because essentially what that is is that it, that's an if exists uh, check. Um, so, even so, it can it considers zero to be a not exist condition, like false. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I did, that part I didn't actually know. So I just learned something new there. Because I, I, 
I I did yeah because I, I know zero and blank can can be interchanged it definitely in the in the, in the Ver, veritapec engine when uh, in terms of what it can recognize and those are the same thing to it uh, but uh, yeah I guess that makes sense I never really thought about it but even though it, it might actually be adding two numbers together let's say negative hundred and a hundred if its end result is still zero even though it has data it will still not return true for that correct yeah because okay yeah 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 so like if this is like yep. zero yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. yeah, it's gonna be false. Implicitly yep. converted to false. And, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. It's good to know. Like in my head, I always considered the, the the if exists, which is basically if you don't actually provide it a condition, you just want it to return true. I always assumed that as long as there's data being fed to it, it would all it, it is technically existing. But yeah, it makes sense because zero and blank are treated as the same, so therefore blank would be false. So like yeah, a small small amount that I just learned as well. So that's that's nice little <laughs> silver lining to this as well. <laughs> okay, good. Now, I guess the disadvantage, well, there are two disadvantages to this method. First is that um, it's actually not as uh, efficient as some other code that we're going to show later. And second, it's less readable, I would say. Like you and I both know what this means. If some formula, some formula. Okay, for somebody who's just came from Excel or something like that, then Will it make sense if some formula, some formula does make sense? I'm not so sure, right? So it's about readability as well. Exactly, yeah. Like, and then, the, you know, for us, we can understand this, but for some other people, having the extra lines won't, won't add a performance cost, it, it, but it does make it more readable. So it, it depends on who, who's the owner, who's being handed off to, etc. Yeah. In some cases, um, like I'm about to show, you can add some more lines and the code is less readable as a result and it's still more efficient which is a bit puzzling to me sometimes like i kind of think i think that you know usually short code is more efficient that's not always the case which i'm about to demonstrate so let's uh, let's save this as example with variables one mm -hmm. We'll save this and we'll copy this and create a new measure. And that will be example with variables too. So here's a trick that I learned from uh, Greg Baldini. Did I pronounce it right? Baldini, yep, that's, that's his name. Baldini, yes, yes. And then I accidentally discovered that SQL BI used the same technique, so I don't know. Uh, I learned it from Greg first, so I'll give it. Uh, to, I'll give the credit to him. So here's the trick. Now we'll do uh, some formula, and then we multiply it by divide, and then some formula, some formula. So what is this? If some formula is zero, then we'll obtain the division by zero, right? Because there is no third parameter, it's going to be blank, right? And then if we multiply zero with a blank, then we'll get a blank, right? Yeah, it's so the same result essentially is never show when zero. Um, otherwise, if it's one, I mean, one divided by one, two divided by like any number divided by itself is just the number. Um, so yeah. is this? Is this faster? Uh, I guess then, then the, uh, yeah, because it, it's it's an if check, and ifs are not at all perform performant. Like they're slow, and I guess the divide yes. function probably is faster because it doesn't have to branch. There is no branching structure anymore. It's now just doing, it's just doing math on top of its uh, on top of the number. So yeah, I would actually th I think this should be faster. Yeah. So let's uh, demonstrate this for those who don't believe us. <laughs> um, in this case. I will need to use DAX Studio and not Performance Analyzer just because my file is very small. And in this case, we won't see a noticeable difference. However, what we will see is that the second formula has fewer storage engine calls. So that's what we're going to show. So I'm going to go to External Tools, DAX Studio. There's one thing that I've seen. Uh people do is the one really quick way to uh 
is to throw an index column of like 10 million rows into uh into power query and it gives you like enough numbers mm. to crunch that it uh, uh, uh I, you basically make like a one column table because all you need to do is sum it or you know and it, or maybe like in some category against it but then dax studio has enough uh pr you know data to crunch that it actually does give you like uh, noticeable differences in it yeah okay so let's do a simple query uh, i think there are more customers than products although actually it doesn't matter because it's still <laughs> very little uh, so let's do skew here and our example with variables one and we'll need to do server timings and now let's uh, run this and then let's see in uh, server timings we see two queries right two, so two lines um, mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. and storage engine queries too now let's change this to example with variables too like this let's run this now it's only one just one storage engine query so yep. it's more efficient yeah, uh, so yeah, it all comes down it, to what Reed has already said. It depends on who the owner is, I guess. If the point is performance, then you should use this divide trick. If, however, readability is more important to you, then you might want to use if. And all of this would be solved if a visual had a very easy option to account for nulls, blanks, and empties, where you can choose a dis basically just uh it should be a visual setting where you can choose display like for a card or a table like uh, you know ha have a field input where you can just simply specify oh yeah for zeros i want you to show an asterisk or custom text or anything anything else but it, it it really should be able to be handled at the visual level you know like i i think that's a pretty popular idea that's voted on on power bi dot power bi dot ideas is uh, a configurable choice of how to handle scenarios like this yeah yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, but... uh, that that was uh, the topic of today's uh, episode: how to hide zeros and two ways to do it. Perfect. That was great. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.